most people do not realize it, but at all, it, where the German army is in occupation as they had been in uh, a country like France for a period of four or five years, which they had. Uh, the Germans are really a very filthy people in sanitation purposes with large areas of of uh, combat people and they're covered with lice and the country is absolutely infested with it. You can scoop them up with your hand. That's body lice I'm talking about. And uh, just before we got on the planes there, why well, I cut my hair off just where it just had a scalp lock left, just about an inch width from my brow to the back of my neck. And the boys asked me, they said, well, what are you doing? And, and most of the airborne people were from up in the New England states, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Adams, Mass, and up in there. And at that time, you know, our country had been in a kind of a bad situation financially. And most people hadn't traveled at all. And a lot of those kids had never been anywhere. Uh, except the town they was born in, so they weren't too well educated about geography. And I told them, I said, well, at home, you know, when we go to war down there, they thought that Oklahoma was just filled with, with wild cowboys and drunk Indians. They thought that was the constitution of our, of our population down here. And, uh, they knew that I was and in Choctaw Indian. And I said, we cut a scalp lock like this when we go into our battles. And I said, whoever kills the other gets to cut that scalp lock off and hang on his belt for a war memorial. They said, no kidding. I said, oh, yeah. And then I laughed and I told them, I said, no. I said, I'm cutting my hair like this so that we don't know how long we'll live or be in there. But I said, you're going to be in for body lice is so thick and scoop them up with your hands and I said they always hunt a place with hair on your body to nest and breed and feed so I said if I cut my hair like this and they fill up with lice and I hit a cow track with water in it I said I'd wash them out real quick so they said well give us a shot at it and so I started cutting their hair and when they made the invasion of Sicily, the 82nd Airborne, they did not have aerial markings, identification markings on the C-47s. And the Navy was sitting out there, and they had orders to shoot down any aircraft that violated their area. And when the 82nd took off and flew along there, they got in a storm and blew out over the Navy. And the Navy shot down 21 plane loads of paratroopers. So just before the night before, the night that we was jumping into Normandy, they decided to put identification markings on all the, on all the, the, uh, C-47. And when I got to cutting everybody's hair and got them a scalp lock, I thought I'll just go ahead and take some of this wet paint off of them. And I'll put markings all over their face for camouflage. And it looked like a bunch of war paint with Indians. And so I didn't know it, of course, at the time. But there was some Signal Corps photographers come along and saw this. And they began to take pictures of the group. And that's how you Mohawk haircuts got started and became famous with the war paint. Normandy was a good experience. It taught us a lot of things. I took 20 men in and came out with two. We, we were, we were pretty serious about the whole thing. We knew, we knew from the report that they had suggested that we was going to lose 50%. In other words, they said, just turn around and shake hand with the man next to you and one of you won't see the sun come up. So each one of us knew that we had a very high percentage, 50% of getting killed. 
But they was they was quite a bit of talk going on and laughing and joking and and everybody had a good attitude about the whole affair. That's one thing about uh, airborne people. Every one of them is a volunteer, and he's there to make as big a contribution as he can, and you can depend upon him to take care of his part, his possession. So it was it was pretty good. In fact, one or two of them went to sleep. They, you know, they were resigned to, to what the opportunities and the chances of loss won, but they were ready to accept that responsibility. The flight wasn't very long. It's only 85 miles across there. We took off from Exeter, England. That's right down near Southampton. I imagine that from the time we loaded in the plane, it took us some time to uh, in the air there, making a formation of the flight pattern that was going in. And then I imagine from the time we picked up off the ground at about 11 o'clock, by the time we jumped, it was, oh, it was one o'clock, nearly two hours.